Hi everyone, welcome to today's webinar. I'm Smriti from Leverage Edu, and we are India's best university admission service. We turn your dreams of study abroad into the reality by helping you end to end with the entire process, right from shortlisting the best universities suited to your profile, to helping you provide and find accommodation, uh, figure out your financials, et cetera. So, Visit us at leverageedu.com for a free first consultation and any of your uh, study abroad concerns. So today's webinar um, is going to talk about culture, cultural shock and how do you overcome cultural shock when you go ahead and study abroad. And when we talk about cultural shock, there are many layers to dissect within this very question. And so we are going to be exploring it through five questions. Um, the first being, what is cultural shock? The second being, why does it happen? The third being, symptoms of cultural shock. The fourth being, various stages of cultural shock. And the fifth being, how do you finally overcome cultural shock? Anybody who's familiar with cultures across the globe is and would be familiar with the idea that there are different cultures across the globe which have different practices. And one thing which is acceptable in one culture might not be acceptable in any other culture. So in India, we have a culture wherein we live with our parents um, for the entirety of our lives and we have joint families. But if you look at the Europe, if you look at United States of America, the concept of a joint family and uh, family accommodation together is something that doesn't exist so much. So that is a cultural difference because of the way the both societies are shaped that exist. Now, cultural differences can be very simple differences like food, um, the way we dress as well. And these are some these are some differences that we have to navigate when we're taking the journey uh, of studying abroad. But before we get into, you know, how do we navigate that and how do we overcome that cultural shock that we are bound to experience by getting, you know, in touch with a culture which is very different from ours, we need to understand what is cultural shock. And I'm going to get into the semantics here a little bit and try to give you um, a definition that's been provided by an anthropologist. So in 1954, Canadian anthropologist Kalervo Oberg gave a definition and he was the first person to actually define cultural shock and he said that there are four phases in cultural shock and these are different phases that impact international students and we all go through this cycle. So he says that you have the first phase which is the honeymoon phase where everything is new, everything is exciting, you're wondrous, you've reached a new country, you're excited to start this new journey and you're very enthusiastic. And you actually don't register the different kinds of changes that are happening according to you and you around you. And you don't register any negative feelings that you might have at that point of time. Um, and the second phase after this honeymoon phase we come to is the crisis phase. Now, in the crisis phase, this newness and everything you're feeling around you starts to overwhelm. It starts to set in. That things are different over here. Things are not the same as they used to be back at home. And here you feel like you might just not fit in. And you know, everyone is different. Everything happens differently over here. The third is the recovery phase. You meet a couple of people. You understand. You get to know your teachers. You get to know your classroom. Um, you understand where your classroom is coming from. You get to know a couple of neighbors, people you live with. That's when you start settling in, you start settling into classes, you start settling into routine, and you start to feel better. That's the recovery phase. Post the recovery phase comes the adjustment phase. So here you, you start understanding the idea that your difference carries a lot of value. Your identity, your experience carries a lot of value. And here you start to accept the cultural differences you experience. And you start to also appreciate the different cultural flavors and enjoy them more. Your things start to feel uh, normal to you. So I took you over the four phases that happen in cultural shock. But if I, if I were to broadly define cultural shock, it's this feeling of confusion that you get, you know, disorientation when you encounter something, um, a, a culture and environment which you are not familiar with. So yes, we have seen a lot of sitcoms based in the United States of America or Europe or Australia, but we still don't know 
exactly the way people live over there or how people are because sitcoms are not the exact representation of life or culture so we don't have a clear idea we don't have uh, the whole picture so every international student almost experiences this and it's very common but the important part is that we need to acknowledge that there's a cultural shock you know you need to process all of that information you need to deal with it because everyone has a different way of dealing with cultural shock and it's okay for you to take a little extra time to adjust in a new environment and in a new setting and it can help you adapt to the new environment it can also help you um you know skill yourself up skill yourself learn more about different cultures about being more accepting and you know help you get a more nuanced perspective and a nuanced understanding of different things now let's get to the second question why does it happen so why does cultural shock actually happen what is so different about the way of life in india and in um, you know um europe or france um in germany in united states of america or australia there are a lot of differences right from how societies are structured how people interact with each other different laws uh food habits how they dress what the climate is like so i'm just going to list out certain which stand out and are extremely important the first is a different way of living and when you go abroad you realize that life completely changed with you you know you you become independent but you also become responsible for yourself and sure uh, you don't have a support system wherein if you know you don't cook the meal for yourself today you'll get the meal prepared you will have to and you go hungry if you don't cook food so it's important for you to be responsible it's important for you to be able to take that control right and sure uh, the trust pay, placed on a student increases because in international universities you get the choice to decide your time table you also get the choice to decide certain classes and therefore they place that trust in you because they understand you to be responsible um adults who will make that decision in an appropriate manner and a, and a way of living is very different so you will see uh, different cultures so for example in uh, western countries mostly what happens is that people try to stay away from work over the weekend and they try to have a balanced approach to work and uh, you would also see that over there the culture of fast time jobs the culture of multiple jobs is something that exists now these are things that we don't encounter in india so this is a different way of living which might for some be a little alienating the second thing is that the language is different right and you might speak english but you speak in a different accent and even a, you, like speaking english in that different in a different accent in the indian accent can also make you feel conscious of yourself because there is going to be difference in the way english is spoken in uh, uk and english is spoken in the us than how english is spoken in india so it's going to be an experience you know when you're doing, dealing with locals you might have a problem understanding you might have a problem not understanding making yourself understood and that's also one layer of difference that you have to navigate um conversational topics will be different there are certain things that indian society considers taboo as subjects which we don't discuss but that taboo in western nations doesn't exist so you talk about those things Uh, more easily and communications more free and that openly discussed over there um and an an example could just be that you know a lot of um australians call each other mate even if they're meet, meeting each other for the first time and that's something that we you know in india don't do we kind of try and keep it um you know impersonal and obviously every um every place has its own colloquialisms and they have their own slang so those are things that you will encounter which you will not be familiar with but you have to adapt and you know you have to kind of um, get a grasp of things and that will happen with time now another thing that's going to be a uh, very different and drastic would be the weather conditions you know the cold in canada during winter can be chilling in uk you will see more rains than you ever expected of uh, australia you will have winters and summers at different times than you are used to having winters and summers over here in india and they can be stressful because these weather conditions can impact your body right and they can impact your health and um, 
you might not even expect that these changes are happening, but it's okay. And you know, you will adapt. So here, a weather condition, because of the weather condition, how life changes is something that shouldn't be a concern or a constraint. The third uh, would be finances and how people spend money. So how people spend money is very different in different countries. How you budget, uh, what kind of money you spend on is something that's going to be extremely different when you go to the United States of America. So for example, if you go to the West, you get fast food for as cheap as $2. But if in university, you're looking to make yourself um, healthy and keep yourself healthy, then you'll have to invest more money into nutritious food and you'll have to pay more for that. And uh, in your head, you might just start calculating how much it is in Indian rupees and that's something that might happen every time you go ahead and buy something. But you have to kind of rationalize things with yourself. You have to tell yourself that if I need to be healthy, then I need to be spending this amount of money on this and this amount of money on that and yes in india it might be you know five dollars cheaper but in the long run five dollars um, does not really matter that much so you should have a budget and of course you should be prudent about how you're spending your money and on what stuff you're spending your money but you should not be a miser and uh, you know saving those one or two dollars here and there might not make too much of a difference in the long run the first would be academics, and this is extremely important because every country has a different structure. It has different teaching methodologies, different ways in which it engages students, scoring patterns, project works, deadlines, scholarships, assignments, and everything's very different. How universities and how countries disseminate information for students is very different. We see that there are different in structures of the programs as well. So in the United States of America, you have a four-year undergraduate degree. In India, you do have so many three-year undergraduate degrees. So this kind of differences can be overwhelming. And uh, sometimes it's possible that there is just too much information out there in front of you, but you have to go ahead and navigate it at your pace. It is also like the difference also within academics is between teacher student relations. So we have always been brought up to have a very formal relation with our teachers, but that concept kind of does not exist in a lot of countries. So their teacher uh, student teacher relationships are informal, and you call your teachers uh, with like a on a first name basis. So those are kinds of things you would have to deal with. But more than that. The college is treating you like adults and you know they're placing trust on you you have to um, process that information that study culture is also kind of going to be different from um, India there's going to be more focus on practical work and assignments and you'll be spending a lot of time just doing that and it's not assignments that you just copy and you plagiarize off the internet and you submit so those kind of assignments will not be accepted these are going to be assignments wherein you have to collaborate with other people. You have to do a lot of deep research, deep depth research, and then try and come up, you know, with your own analysis, critically thinking about the question that your professors have given you for the assignment. So the study culture is very different. And similarly, the work culture is also going to be different in those countries. Now, new societal rules are also, you know, going to be there and they might be um, a cause of a culture shock because there are certain rules in every society where which are unspoken you know you don't say where it exists so something like um, a namaste in India when you're greeting your elders when you're meeting your elders is something that's an unspoken rule and um, in Canada you say thank you sorry for very small things and you know um, in, in the west you stop while you're driving, you stop your car, let the pedestrians pass. And the pedestrians don't have to care about their safety. The drivers have to care about the safety of the pedestrian. And that's the rule. So those kind of societal rules are, you know, things that you're going to encounter, which will have a direct impact on how you're functioning day to day, right? So uh, another example could be the concept of personal space and privacy that is extremely important and valued in the West. And um, 
you don't to a certain extent see that in india we um are okay asking very personal questions also to people who have just acquaintances and people who are not close and that that is a concept of something that doesn't exist in multiple other countries that you might be looking at as a destination for going abroad another would be just the idea of people being a little more open welcoming friendly especially to strangers we try to stay away from strangers you know stranger danger is a concept that we're all taught since we're uh, you know since we're little kids but um, and as we grow up we learn to value interaction more but in their societies yes um, you know they are a little more open to strangers they're open to each sharing experience they're open to engaging in conversation and this is a difference that you will experience when you're interacting with people in regular settings when people are more non judgmental they're open they're happy with the work that they're doing and they're that value to human life and not to the tags that come with human labor right so for them a person is going to be valuable irrespective of that person being a janitor being a doctor and that's something that we also have to kind of learn from um these people and from those societies and the culture in that society and that's something that you can know you know obviously um get more attuned to and more um just just more comfortable with the idea you can get more comfortable with another idea would be working multiple jobs and this is a concept we don't share of in india and we don't even hear of children paying for their own college education or they are working part time to pay for their own college education unless um there is some financial distress that's happening but this kind of culture exists a lot in you know the west especially these developed countries that we mostly look at as destinations to studying abroad because sure people um you know they try to assert their independence early on and they try to finance their own education and um, decrease the dependence that they have on their parents early on itself the other thing that can happen is that you miss home and you miss the food because food is extremely extremely important and uh, you know i can just only imagine how someone would feel by when when you don't get access to the food that you've always been used to and it can be a process getting over that and um, you know um adapting to the food palate in that country can be process it, it's going to be difficult of course because you um can't just expect in a day to get over the food that you've just grown up eating right so you can try and explore now indian cuisine of all types is you know just everywhere it's ever pervasive so you just have to try and explore you might be able to find um indian restaurants over there and you can eat there but more than that you can also explore you can eat their cuisine and see what works good for you what doesn't work good for you and uh, missing home is something that will definitely happen but you will have to go ahead and call your parents and keep them in a loop just keep talking to your friends in india and um, try to lessen that feeling now there is a serious aspect of culture shock itself um, a lot of people are able to deal with culture shock but for a lot of people it gets so overwhelming that there are certain very serious symptoms and i'll just list down and talk about some of these symptoms one could be anxiety depression loneliness and you experience early on when you are still adapting when you are still adjusting and figuring out um you know your own environment you're figuring out how things are going to go about and the seriousness can definitely depend on individual to individual homesickness is a symptom of experiencing a cultural shock because you miss what you've left behind right and you're willing to adapt and willing to adapt to your new conditions you're trying to stick too close to things the back at home you're trying to hold them so sure it becomes important that you adapt right you build new memories it's possible that your sleep is disturbed it is also possible that you know um you're keeping yourself isolated and you know not networking not making friends and you're keeping yourself remote your productivity is decreased you're not able to study um you're facing issues with your curriculum you're not able to manage your time time management is a symptom it could you know um it could be because you're experiencing a cultural shock and you don't know how to navigate that so you know you're not able to schedule things and you are not able to figure out the right balance 
between work and everything that's there. Drastic personality changes. They are like a big giveaway of the fact that you are experiencing a cultural shock because sometimes what we do is we just try to blend in the new culture. We try to fit in, and for fitting in, we lose ourselves and we lose parts or essence of our own culture, of our own identity, and we adjust our personality to the new society to become more likable. And it is something that happens with everyone. It's possible that it happens um, to a certain degree with everyone, but we just have to deal with it, right? Here, um, you know, changing accent is a very visible personality change. Changing how you dress is a very visible personality change. Um, language, the kind of language that you use to sound, you know, more American, more British, um, not able to control expenditures. All of these are very visible, drastic personality changes, which you will have to navigate. And here, it's best to not force them. So it's best to just be yourself and try to soak everything in and, you know, dynamically let things happen to you instead of adjusting and forcing change in your personality. We spoke about this. Uh, stages of cultural shock. So the first is the excitement, everything's new, then the shock. Oh my God, everything's new. The third is acceptance that, yes, everything is new, but I'm going to make my way through it. It's going to be fine. And the fourth is adaptation. Yes, everything's new, and therefore I need to learn. You know, I need to learn this skill, I need to learn how to be able to do this and that. So these four stages and you're all set. So how, how do we actually overcome cultural shock, right? You have to stay calm. You have to accept the changes that are happening, right? And you have to ensure that you have a very strong support system. Stay in touch with your friends um, from India. Stay in touch with your family because the support system can help you deal with all of these changes. They can help you navigate um, your entire journey through this cultural shock. So the first idea of overcoming a cultural shock is actually acceptance. So it's okay to accept that I did not know everything about, you know, being in France and I'm finding out a lot of things and some are very weird and uncomfortable and um, I'm going to take some time to process and adjust, you know, this is not something that I was prepared for or I knew about. Um, second, extremely important to keep connected. Yes, this is something that I was saying that you have to keep a support system with you. So you have to keep connected with your friends and family and we will keep you motivated. There'll be that extra push that helps you to now deal with um, these changes. The other others could be that you attend different events, right? You explore the city, you kind of get to know the people, you understand their culture, right? There a lot of countries organize different, different events, uh, trying to explain their culture, and trying to make other people understand their culture, so figure out something that your university is offering or the city that you live in is offering and participate in them, right? Um, it can be a learning experience and you might, you know, um, get to know about a culture that you start respecting and you start adoring and, you know, want to be a part of. You could find work, you can work part-time, you know, that's something that would keep you, you know, occupied and you'll be able to earn and manage your expenses very well. You have to be social. You have to make friends. So within your university, you know, network with people, understand what challenges they face, understand what challenges you face, and try, try to, you know, go ahead and talk about the various different um, experiences. Try to understand from people's experiences. You, you should definitely pursue your hobbies. If you had any hobbies before you came here, you should pursue them. They can be very fulfilling. Universities also facilitate hobbies by having different, different clubs. So if they don't, you can probably, you know, um, ask them to get a club which is suited to your hobby. But otherwise, if they do, then it's a great idea to join something like cooking, gardening, um, painting, sailing, etc., rowing, biking, all of these. Now, if at all things um, don't clear out, right, and it does not become okay for you, and they keep being overwhelming and overwearing, then it's okay to accept that and also seek professional help because your mental health and your health is extremely, extremely important. So you can approach your advisor 
You can approach your professors, your counselors, or talk about it with your friends or family. And most universities do have very well uh, trained professionals who can help you through this process. You can reach out to them and tackling, and if you try to tackle these issues alone, it might be more damaging than you think. And therefore, it's important for you to be able to acknowledge when it's getting out of hand and then reach out. So it's a very common reaction, you know, experiencing a cultural shock because everything about every culture is not great. And when you go from one place to another, which is drastically different, seeing the difference can be intimidating. So it, it's bound to happen when you're traveling to a new environment and it happens with most students and you're not alone. And we can easily deal with it, right? It just takes a little time. It will take some effort from your part. It will also take some patience from your part. So you can use this experience and, you know, try and understand yourself better and understand the culture that you are a part of, the new culture that you're experiencing also better. And for any um, other concerns that you have with regards to Education abroad, you can always consult um, Leverage Edu. You can visit us on our website, leverageedu.com. And that's it for today's webinar. If you're someone who's missed the webinar, this is going to be like on Leverage TV as well, so you can catch it there. Leverage has also introduced India's largest study abroad scholarship website, Kuror. And if you're somebody who has an admit from a university abroad, you should definitely apply for the scholarship, which is a very simple process. You just have to submit a little essay on leverageedu.com. Um, and uh, let's see, yeah, that's about it. And I think I covered most of the frequently asked questions as well, which you know revolve around if to seek help, if not to seek help, and uh, when to kind of determine if you're going on the right path or if you're not, and how do you deal with these cultural differences and how do you kind of create a balance between exploring that new culture and adapting to it and not losing yourself and your individual identity. So you, who you are is going to determine what your experience comes out to be, and you should not let anything change that. So that's it from us. Uh, for your free consultation, first free consultation, you can give us a ring on leverageedu.com. Thank you, everyone.